Uh, hi everyone, Bloodfiny Ange Tano here, the internet's busiest music nerd, and it's time for a review of this new Cemetery mixtape, Bloody, Bloody Angel. Okay, here we have the latest tape from rapper, singer, songwriter, California guy, Cemetery. Someone I haven't formally reviewed in a minute, the last project of his I loved was his Rainbow Bridge 3 mixtape, so maybe he's due for a reintroduction at this point. I want to say out of the gate, this guy's music is not going to be for everyone, but still, it's interesting how Cemetery sound has such an oddly specific appeal to it, but simultaneously pulls from a wide variety of places. Imagine if you took the raw, explosive appeal of Chief Keef era Chicago drill music, and then added to that the campy and violent vibes and imagery of your average horrorcore hip hop album, and then filter all of that through as much auto tune, distortion, compression, and gain as possible. And if you manage to uh, create something with all of those elements, you will be somewhere within the realm of Cemetery sound. And this is a sound Cemetery pretty much perfected on that Rainbow Bridge three mixtape. The problem though is a lot of that project's appeal came down to how harsh and ugly and unforgiving its sound was. It became kind of a breakout project for Cemetery and simultaneously was already so over the top and didn't leave him a lot of room to progress past this point or leapfrog over some of the aspects of this tape, because what is he going to do from here? Make a project that is uh, somehow more distorted, uh, more just bricked out? If you got any noisier than this, you would pretty much just be uploading white noise to Spotify. So without a lot of options left in front of him, uh, Cemetery made some interesting moves post the release of this project. He decided to focus more on building up the overall roster of his Haunted Mound Collective, which features a lot of uh, very similar horror horrorcore trap kindred spirits such as Hackle and Buckshot. And then the next tape he dropped that very same year, Screaming Forest, yeah, that saw him like really turning down the distortion quite a bit, making the mixes and vocals a lot more readable. But the issue with that again though was that the, the harshness was really core to Cemetery's appeal and uh, in pulling back and in toning his sound down, uh, he really removed a key aspect of uh, his recipe, and the end results, in my opinion, didn't quite work. But uh, in Cemetery's defense, since that project, he's really been branching out and trying to incorporate some different styles into his sound and work more with melody, make his hooks pop more. And I think this tape here is the culmination of those efforts. Because with Bloody Angel, we have somehow landed in a place where I think Cemetery sound has a bit more of a goth appeal now, especially with the recent release of the single Wendigo, which has a ton of a kind of sloshed, warped, wiggly guitars in the mix. I think there are some other tracks on this LP that hit uh, roughly in the same way uh, some of Yeats' more druggy and chaotic stuff used to a few years ago. And in addition to that, a lot of the distortion and compression of the Rainbow Bridge tapes uh, is back, but not turned up too high, just enough so that there is like some extra room for the vocals to be more intelligible, for those sung melodies to really translate. So a few years down the road, we are finally getting uh, some admirable and notable changes in Cemetery Sound. But with that being said, Bloody Angel still feels like kind of a transitional moment where whatever evolution Cemetery is trying to uh, complete is just not fully finished. Now, in the record's defense, I do think it starts off relatively strong. The title track is an aggressive and banging combination of drill and horrorcore with a lot of sticky, standout autotune lyrics. And I think this song is one of the best examples this tape has to offer of this new balance between harshness and melodic appeal that Cemetery is going for. I would say this is also the case for the song Headlights, where many of the vocal and synth melodies are a bit meltier and woozier. There's also Wendigo that I mentioned earlier, which I wasn't crazy about as a single when I first heard it, but in the context of the record, I do think it is one of the stronger songs here. It is a genuinely admirable attempt at making a goth rock song work uh, within the context of Cemetery's overall sound, and in a weird way, it kind of reminds me of the heavy, mutant, atmospheric, uh, 
weirdo goth stuff that a band like Grave Babies uh, used to do back in 2013. I also think the lyrics on this track speak to Cemetery's uh, very unique style, sense of humor, and general appeal, and that he's trying to write this song about uh, devotion and desire, I guess love in a way too, but he's filtering it through uh, all of these horror type images in a way that comes across as very self-aware and consciously preposterous. And speaking of ridiculous as well as self-aware, there's also the track Smoke Machine, which is a smoke anthem where Cemetery tries to make it very clear that he is not talking about weed. This song's about cigs, just blasting cigs. Just broadcasting that with bars like, I ain't smoking on reefer, boy. I'm smoking on that fucking cancer. Remember, kids, don't smoke unless you're a goth girl, country singer, or EDM DJ. That I can agree to. Uh, there's also the song Mordor, where, yes, Cemetery portrays himself as uh, riding around Mordor. He be at the club uh, we pour for. Again, not only outlandish, but funny, too. And I think Cemetery is doing a better job of kind of building up his appeal, Haunted Mound's appeal, the lore of this collective, this brand, uh, with not just the sound and the distortion and the noisiness of the music, but uh, the, the narrative within it, the things he says. Parking Lot Scarecrow, in my opinion, is also a banger, but after this point on the tape, I think things start to go downhill, lose steam, we're painting ourselves into a corner, not only with tracks that feel like a rehash of past successes in the Cemetery discography, uh, but we're also getting mixes that just frankly do not work, which is really saying something because, like, generally the amount of distortion and harshness in your average Cemetery song, uh, even the toned down ones, is pretty high, which is why it's shocking uh, that the hi-hats aren't properly mixed into the instrumental on Sacrifice. Like, they're literally so high in volume and tinny they are painful to listen to. We have more variations in style on the song Buried My Heart, which is kind of like this synth horror odyssey instrumental piece that sounds like John Carpenter on Too Much Cough Syrup. There's also Benadryl Angel, which I think is maybe just a little bit too on the nose with its adherence to... Uh... <laughs> over-the-counter uh, drugs as like a means of altering your mind, escaping whatever. Like, I know again the appeal of Cemetery is to be ridiculous and to be over the top, but come on. Moving further down the road, there's Hearst, Rucks. which I think uh, Cemetery's already done tracks that have this level of distortion in the mix and kind of topical appeal. I mean, Murder Ride. And in the last leg of the tape, we get a lot of features that don't really add that much to the project because there's kind of a balance here. It, if, if you sound like yourself on a Cemetery song, chances are you're going to stick out like a sore thumb if you're not like succumbing to, you know, being buried in the mix, having all the auto-tune on your voice, uh, maybe sounding clear or, uh, I don't know, singing in a kind of normal way. Like, if on a Cemetery song you're not sounding to some degree like, wow, 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 wow. <laughs> you're, you're probably going to just, I don't know, come across as like a little out of place. I think Wick of Phase Springs Eternal comes the closest to contributing effectively uh, to the track that he is featured on while simultaneously still sounding kind of like himself. There's also Dead Trees, which I appreciate for trying to switch things up a little bit, but the very bright, glissy synthesizers that uh, Cemetery throws into the mix on this one, I don't think really vibe with his overall sound. And by the time we hit Money and die, it's very clear that uh, Sem does not care whether or not the refrains coming out of his mouth are even catchy at this point. In fact, it kind of feels like we've regressed a bit, uh, not just to Rainbow Bridge 3, but maybe even to before that. It is with that, I want to say, I think Cemetery still has a very unique sound and style and appeal and lane in today's underground music landscape, and I do appreciate and applaud any and all attempts on this project to uh, switch things up and merely not just like, you know, release another Rainbow Bridge 3 or another Butcher House for that matter. But if this is his best attempt at kind of branching out, varying things up a bit and kind of maturing his songwriting style, it's just not going far enough, which is why I'm feeling a strong five to a light six on this one. Tran, Zishin, have you given this project a listen? Did you love it? Did you hate it? What would you rate it? You're the best, you're the best. What should I review next? Hit the like if you like. Please subscribe and please don't cry. Hit the bell as well. Over here next to my head is another video you can check out. Hit that up or a link to subscribe to the channel. Anthony Fantano, Cemetery uh, Forever.